Hey, what's going on, guys? Zebs here, bringing you another tutorial. Uh, this week will be a another uh, render series. Um, so today we're going to be going over this cool little render um, I've came up with a couple days ago, and um, the reason I like this one a lot was because of the uh, the text and the atom rays. Um, I have a lot of cool ideas I could do with this render, so that's why I thought I'd make a tutorial on it. Now, before we start off, uh, this render doesn't really require any certain materials. Like, it's kind of whatever you guys want. Um, so I'm just going to use these materials here, but you guys are free to use whatever materials you want. It all works. Um, so to start off with, um, you're not going to need any plugins. All you're going to need is just uh, Cinema 4D. Uh, I'm going to be using Cinema 4D R16 uh, Studio version. So, I mean... I'm pretty sure versions, any version will be able to do this. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. Um, so to start off with, we're just gonna get some text, um, preferably two lines. So probably your name and then whatever. So maybe like, for example, uh, Soar, Zebs, or you, whatever, you know, you get the idea. Uh, I'm just gonna be using Zebs Arts today. Um, so we're gonna get our two text and then let me just do this and then bring it back. And then I'm just going to remove everything in here. Boom. All right, so we have our basic um, plain text. So this tutorial will be kind of like a easy flow kind of tutorial. So if you guys have never opened up Cinema 4D before, um, it might be a little bit hard because I'm going to be using shortcuts and things like that. But I'll, I'll probably say how to do it, things like that. Um, just keep that in mind if you have never used Cinema 4D before. So to start off with, we're going to get some some text here. And um, to do this, you usually want to have some bold text, I would say. It works best with bold text, but I mean, it's up to you guys. Do what you guys like, but um, I'm going to use some bold text today. It usually uh, it looks nice with bold text, I'd say. Because with the softer one, there's more, or softer one, a uh, thinner one, there's uh, more gaps. So it's a little bit harder to get the, the style. Um, so I'm just going to be using typograph. Um, pretty much everybody has typograph nowadays, it seems like, so works out we're gonna use typograph pro bold or the extra bold um, and just kind of line it up a little bit just the best you can like this is pretty much lined up and we're just gonna drag it back a little bit into the lighting and I'm gonna make it much smaller I would say you don't want to have it too big like 200 like it's, it's again it's up to you and how your Lightroom works um, but for mine I like to have smaller things um, so once we've done this, we've got our basic text here. We're going to make the depth 60, and we're going to go into caps, start, and then end. Uh, we're going to put these both to fill a cap, and then set the uh, radius to 1, and leave. So, so they're all 1, basically. And uh, once we've done this, we're now going to center the axis. Um, oops. Actually, can you do it with this? Eh, doesn't, I guess it doesn't matter. Hold on. Um, just select both the text, and we're now going to rotate it to a kind of like a, a funky angle in a sense so like mm, something like this I would say it looks nice um, so once I render it out now you can see that it's at an angle it's all lined up uh, it's very curvy and it has a good depth um, so now we're going into the um, we're gonna ran randomize it now so we're gonna push C on our keyboard and this will make it where each path is separate and we're just gonna go through each one and we're gonna kind of randomize it now I know there is the uh, the um, randomizer tool here. I just don't like using it. Uh, I don't like the results of it, so I like to uh, manually do it usually. So we're just gonna kind of go through each one and um, randomize it how you like. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. Um, so just go through each letter, kind of rotate it, um, maybe have it at a different angle or something. You know, just give it a little bit of a cooler look. I'm just going to do the same thing here, kind of maybe right here, like so. Um, do it with the arts one also. Now, you can do the style without randomizing it. Uh, it works both ways, but just in my opinion, I like it kind of randomized a little bit at different angles. Um, but you don't need to randomize it to achieve this style. Um, so if you guys want, I can make a Photoshop tutorial of this style also. So like... Um, like if you guys want to like the Photoshop part of the style of uh, different things you can do, definitely I can do it for you guys. Just leave a comment down below if that's what you want. Um, so as you can see here, if I render it out again, everything's kind of randomized. 
um, try and avoid overlapping things. So like this A right here is, you can tell it's overlapping the Z. Uh, just things like that kind of bug me a little bit. Um, so I mean, if you guys do like that, go for it. But I'm just gonna kind of move it forward a little bit, something like this, I guess. So let me, oops. let me uh, render just this part to see. You know, it, it'll work, I guess. So once we've done this, we're now gonna add our materials. Um, like I said before, any material works. Um, I just have some nice uh, concrete ones I like to use. Um, so if you guys do own any of my material packs, you can use them. Uh, it works, but any material works. So I'm just going to go over and drag um, the material over each piece of uh, text so that every... Whoops, why isn't it? Hmm, I think it is. It's just not working right. Boom, boom. Just drag it over each thing. And as you can see, well, it, on the sides it looks very stretched. Um, and it doesn't look very good on the front. So one way we can fix this is um, go into the, uh, the Motex Text One Arts and then select all of the uh, materials. Go into your projection, set it to cubic, and then select seamless. And that will remove the stretched material. It'll make the front look nice. And it's just overall a good thing to do when you're adding materials to anything, pretty much. Just set the projection to cubic and seamless. Now, if you add a sphere, then it's a different story. You want to use spherical and so forth. Uh, but if you're using like a custom shape, like a T, for example, just set it to cubic, seamless. And we're just going to do this to the top one also. Uh, the Zebs part, we're going to select cubic, seamless, and boom. Um, once we've done this, the next part is uh, the Atomarim. So we're going to duplicate the Motex that we just made, go into Atomarim, and drag Motex 1, and then the other one in the other. So it does this, uh, kind of like a weird shape, which um, we're going to uh, make it a lot thinner. So to do this, just select the cylinder radius to 1 and the sphere radius to 1. Um, and that will cause a nice looking outline of your text. Um, so I recommend using a different material for this one. So like maybe a lighter shaded of your main one. So, or darker, I guess, if you wanted, just try avoid using the same one. You could, if you wanted, it just looks a little bit weird. So I'm just going to use, uh, another material I have here, the Adam Ray one. So like the cubic seamless. And if I render it out now, it will, um, it'll take a little bit longer. <laughs> obviously um, but you will notice once it starts going that um, it has a nice brighter outline um, on the edges of everything so it looks really nice um, it's, and the concrete looks nice also so it's really good for uh, color corrections you can make different types of color corrections for this it looks very nice um, so once we've done this we're now going to um, then start with our little like back Atomary type deals. So to do this, we just go into our uh, cube here, select plat platonic, select type, um, and then bucky. And this makes a really cool like beehive type shape deal. And uh, once we've done this, we're going to go in here, select atomary, and drag the platonic into the atomary. And that will cause um, each edge of the uh, beehive type deal to have this outline. So the same thing we did with this text, but instead of duplicating it and doing an atom array, we just did an atom array, so it deletes the main uh, the main part, so just the outline. And we're going to leave it the way it is, so it has these spheres on each little edge, and we're just going to drag it behind um, our text. Make it a little bit smaller, um, so it's easier to uh, work with and uh, resize. And we're just going to kind of go over each thing, so some of it's kind of going over the main part of the text. And um, we're just going to keep doing this until we go all the way around everything. Usually you just need three. So, well, depending on how long the text is. Um, the style would look a little weird with, like, 20 letters, I feel like. <laughs> so, like, if you had, like, some really long word, it would look kind of weird, I guess. Um, so we're just going to kind of go over everything with this. Um, it's okay if you guys have uh, part of this this bottom part kind of popping out. Um, usually when you add it to the banner, you can cut that stuff out if you want. So we're just going to kind of go over each thing. Kind of have some of it popping over the S. Duplicate it one more time. I think that will be enough for the A and the R if we get it right in between it. 
So something like this. Yeah, I'd say it works. Um, I really like this look, I'm, I must say. Um, so once we've done this, we're just going to add our secondary material. Now, this is the one where you would want to add a colored material, so maybe lava, gel, like whatever you guys want. Um, I'm just going to use the gel V2 material. It looks nice with the, uh, this material combination. Um, so once we've done this, we can now start with our um, adding our little logos. Now, this part is kind of optional just due to the fact that if you don't have a logo, you don't have to add it. But if you do... You know, I'd add it just for the little detail. Um, so we're just going to add our logo in. Um, and my logo, for some odd reason, in my Lightroom, doesn't, like, center well. So I'm just going to center it out. Just make sure when you add your logo, center it out so that you can edit it pretty well. So as you can see here, the axis over here is completely different with the logo. So we're just going to move the axis whoops, to the center of the logo. So to do this, just click this, drag it over, and um, like so. Drag it to the center, unclick it, or click it again so it unchecks. Um, and then we're going to select our object, set the um, movement to 30, half of the uh, the main text here. Go into caps, set the fillet cap to 1 uh, on both of them again, um, like so. And now we're just going to uh, make it much smaller, I'd say. Something about this size, maybe even smaller if you like. And we're just going to kind of go over... Um, random parts of the text and we're just going to kind of randomize it a little bit so like maybe like like something like this here i'm going to make it a little bit smaller so something looking like this uh duplicate it you can have as many of these as you want uh just try i'll, I'll stick to probably three or four um so just do something along the lines of this boom kind of up and more well yeah something like this maybe i'll have it overlapping the s a little bit it's kind of cool looking and then I'll have one in between here. So select it again and just drag it up and then in between here. Now you can put it in different areas. Again, it kind of depends on your text and the letters where they go and how you like them. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Let me actually move this forward a little bit so it's coming out of the Z, so something like this. And then once we've done this, well, I kind of care. I'm gonna add one more actually. Um, Add one more to the bottom, right here. And then once we've done this, maybe I'll remove the top one. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. All right, boom, whoops. Did I remove, oh, whoops, done goofed. So we'll get rid of these two, yeah, all right, I like that. So once we've done this, um, I recommend adding the material used for your outline. So in this case, I used my Adam Ray one and just add this on uh, the little the little logos just to give different like shades of gray or whatever like material you're using. Um, so also I recommend if you're gonna use a heavy like grunge material on this, um, I recommend for the little logos, turn off the displacement or turn it down a lot so that it doesn't, oh, like, like pretty much destroy the logo form so it's just like not a big blob um so in this case i'm not using a lot of displacement so i don't really need to do that if i don't even think i'm using displacement no i'm not even using displacement on this so yeah so i mean this is pretty much the basic um thing you can do with this obviously you can do some more with uh, reaper x by doing uh little lines so if you go to your front view and um just do little like random well here let me do this like random lines going through this um you could do some pretty cool things with this i would say so like kind of like some spider stuff <laughs> i guess um let me just get some reaper x up in this hood whoops um in this case we used a lot <laughs> so i think this is a, the right amount you know i want to say so just drag each Reaper into, uh, or the each spline into the Reaper X, if you do have Reaper X, and just kind of uh, drag it behind the text. So, whoops, let me just do this. Whoops, I'm all selected. Make sure you have them all selected. <laughs> uh, that's an example of what not to do. So have them all selected. Just, what? Oh, I done goofed. Hold on, there, okay. Let's drag it all back, and then uh, you can have it behind. So something like this would work. That actually looks really cool. I might do that. Just kind of put your uh, colored material on that now. Select cubic. 
seamless. Um, edit each reaper by turning down the strands, I would say. Oh, I did it again. Uh, let's turn down this to one. And that, that actually gives a really cool effect. Um, I'm going to keep it actually like that. But if you guys want a, uh, a Photoshop part of this, I can definitely do that for you guys for next week. Um, just leave a comment down below on it. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, leave a like down below. And if you didn't like this, leave a dislike down below. They're there for a reason. And uh, leave a comment down below. Or in the description, there's a link where you can suggest tutorials for each one of us. Um, so I've been your host today, Zebs, and I am out. Peace.